Graphing Linear Inequalities from Standard Form This lesson is a follow-up to Graphing Linear Inequalities, a video I recorded in December 2008. For this video, we will set aside the graphing calculator and use plain old-fashioned graph paper. A linear inequality in standard form looks very much like an equation in standard form. Here we have the equation 3x minus 4y equals 12 and the inequality 3x minus 4y is greater than 12. The only difference or distinction between these two relationships is the symbol of equality. In the case of an equation, it's an equal sign. In the case of an inequality, it's the inequality symbol, in this case greater than. In an equation, we are solving for a line, but in an inequality, we are solving for a boundary line because the line we graph is a boundary. On one side of the line is the solutions, and on the other side has no solutions. On this inequality, the shaded area above the line is the set of solutions, and the unshaded area below contains no solutions. Since the boundary line is solid, that line is also part of the solution set. We need to find the equation of the boundary line. We need to draw a dashed or solid line for the boundary line, and finally, we need to shade on one side of that line to represent the solution set. Let's graph this linear inequality, 3x minus 4y is greater than 12. When I get ready to graph, I like to call it not equal to, but greater than, but we'll get into that a little later. I like to graph lines in standard form by finding the x and y intercepts. To find the x-intercept of this boundary line, we can cover the y term with our thumb and see what's left. We have 3x is greater than 12, so we can write that off to the side. We divide both sides by 3 and get x is greater than 4. We mark the x-intercept at x equals 4. We solve for the y-intercept by covering up the x term. What's left is negative 4y is greater than 12. But will it be greater than? Not so fast. When we solve an inequality by dividing by a negative number, we have to change the direction of the sign. So it will be y is less than negative 3. Now we draw in a point at the y-intercept of negative 3. With the x and y-intercepts drawn, we're ready to draw the boundary line. For inequalities, there are two kinds of boundary lines. A solid line representing equal to and a dashed line when the boundary line is not part of the solution set. Since this one's less than, it's a dashed line. We draw a dashed line using these two points. And since the sign is less than, which way do we shade? Less than means down or below, so we shade below the boundary line. So this is the graph of 3x minus 4y is greater than 12. I believe in checking because it's easy to make a mistake with a sign or something like that. I like picking the point 0 comma 0 since the math is so easy. So mark the point 0 comma 0, substitute 0 for x and 0 for y. That gives us 0 is greater than 12. Is 0 greater than 12? No, it's not. So therefore the point 0 comma 0 is not in the solution set or shaded area, showing us that we shaded below the line correctly. Check. Now let's look at this inequality. 5x plus 6y is greater than or equal to negative 30. Again, we use the thumb to cover the y term. That leaves us with 5x is greater than or equal to negative 30. We solve for x by dividing both sides by 5 to get x by itself, so x is greater than or equal to negative 6. We mark the x-intercept on the x-axis at negative 6. We now need to find the y-intercept and start that by covering the x term. That leaves us with a 6y is greater than or equal to negative 30. We solve for the y-intercept by dividing both sides by 6 so that y is equal to and greater than negative 5. We mark the y-axis at negative 5. Using the x and y-intercepts, we draw the line. What kind of line? It's a solid line since the symbol is equal to and greater than. And since it's greater than, which way is greater than? Up is greater than, so we shade upward. Finally, we mark a point on the graph, and 0, 0 is the easiest to use, as before. Since both x and y are 0 for this point, this gives us 0 is greater than or equal to negative 30. Is that correct? Yes, it is because it's in the shaded area and it's part of the solution set. Check. Let's look at this one. Negative 8x plus 7y is greater than 56. Remember that when it comes to graphing, it's helpful to say not equal to, but greater than, so we keep in mind the type of boundary line we need to draw first. 
Stop the video. I recommend getting out some graph paper and trying this one yourself. When you're finished, restart the video, then we'll see how you did. First, cover the y term. That leaves us with negative 8x is greater than 56. We solve for x by dividing both sides by negative 8. 56 divided by negative 8 equals negative 7. And since we divide by a negative number, the sign will switch, so we have x is less than negative 7. So we place a point on the x-axis at the x value of negative 7. Now we solve for the y-intercept by covering the x term. That leaves us with 7y is not equal to, but greater than 56. We finally solve for y by dividing both sides of the inequality by 7. So since 56 divided by 7 is 8, we have y is greater than 8. Did we divide by a negative number to solve for y? No, and since we did not, we don't have to switch around the sign. Now we mark the y-intercept. Here we draw the line. It's a dashed line since it's not equal to, but greater than. And since it's greater than, we need to shade which way? Upwards. Now we finally check the point 0, 0, to see if it's a solution. Since it's in the unshaded area, it should not be in the solution set. So substitute back into our original inequality for 0, 0. That gives us negative 8 times 0 plus 7 times 0 on the left. And that gives us 0 is greater than 56. Is that true? Is 0 greater than 56? No, it's less. So since the point 0, 0 is in the unshaded area, that proves that we shaded correctly. Check. Let's look at graphing this inequality. 2x minus 9y is, is less than 18. For purposes of graphing, I would like to call it 2x minus 9y is not equal to but less than 18. Stop the video. I recommend, again, getting out some graph paper and trying this one. When you're finished, restart the video to see how you did. First, we solve for the x-intercept by covering the y term. That leaves us with 2x is not equal to but less than 18. We find the x-intercept by dividing by 2. So since 18 divided by 2 is 9, our x-intercept is 9. We mark that x-intercept on the x-axis at 9. Now we find the y-intercept by hiding the x term. That gives us negative 9y is less than 18. We find our y-intercept by dividing by negative 9. And since 18 divided by negative 9 is negative 2, our y-intercept is negative 2. To solve for y, did we divide by a negative number? Yes, we did. So we switched the direction of the sign. Now we mark the y-intercept at negative 2. Now we draw the boundary line. What type of boundary line? Since it's greater than, that would be a dashed line. Which way do we shade? Greater means up. So we shade above the boundary line. All that remains to do is check to see that we shaded correctly. Using 0 comma 0 again, we replace x with 0 and y with 0. So we have 2 times 0 minus 9 times 0. And is 0 less than 18? Yes. And since 0 comma 0 is in the shaded area of the graph, we know that we have shaded correctly. Check. To summarize, first find the x and y intercepts by covering the y and x terms respectively, then solve for the x-intercept and then the y-intercept, then mark the intercepts. Then draw the boundary line, dashed for not equal to, less than or greater than, and solid for equal to. Now shade above or below. Greater than is above and less than is below the boundary line. Finally, use a point to check if the correct area was shaded. 0, 0 is usually the best coordinate to check since the calculations are pretty easy. This has been Graphing Linear Inequalities from Standard Form. Thanks for viewing.